sering bertemu, sering melihat roh tu pasti orang dengan wajah orang kau. And so I picture that there, so that I'm able to deliver what I know. I I spent a lot of time with him, and this gentleman he was. The daughters that it's important to plan. It's important to strategize because when you plan, you know what activity, the activity that you are looking at, whether it continues through the overall game, overall result that you are giving it, or it's just a full time exercise of an urban lifestyle. We all wake up in the morning and we all go to office and then we end up in the office and we come back. So the time we spend on the road is what we call as EFAS. So that's ranges from anywhere from 8.30 in the morning till around 11 o'clock in the morning, depending on our work efficiency and our commitment to work. Uh, and we did run again starting at around 5.30 and uh, we go on from 8.30. We did have peak hours. Uh, this is the time when a lot of pollution is there in the air. And uh, the window dropping time uh, you know, is anywhere after that and not much of uh, not much of pollution takes place at that time. Uh, if we pull transport, uh, if four of us go together to office, possibly we are reducing the labels, uh, reducing the burden. Not only on the pollution, but also on our own pockets, because possibly we can share the uh, A lot of people do that, and a lot of people don't do it because it hurts states. Uh, I must go in my own car because people are looking at me, and it's not really good that if I you know, sit in the back seat or somebody else, you know, possibly have a much serious. Uh, a lot of innovative means uh, have been put by many institutions. Uh, I know that uh, many army uh, army cantonments have a system of uh, Wednesday and Friday cycles. Uh, so irrespective of the brass and the age, uh, people go to office maybe it's about six, seven kilometers on their cycles. They wear uniforms, they look smart, and everybody goes to cycles. And nobody uses cars other than an emergency. Uh, it's a discipline. It's something which is uh, part of the ingrained in and uh, I've seen some countries also have a similar model. They have uh, odd number and even number of uh, transport system there. If your car number ends with even numbers, you can drive today. And if your car number ends with an uh, odd number, you drive on odd days. Uh, many of them have this system. So you always have only 50% of your transport on the uh, road at one time. So it forces you to pull. Uh, IT companies have introduced this working from office concept, which everybody loves. Because, you know, when your productivity at home is the best. Uh, so that simply prevents them from spending on a taxi for, to pick up, the, pick up the employees and drop them to, bring them to office. It saves on their own electricity. It saves them from using you know, ACs, computers, and anything. And people work from their homes. And uh, uh, the transportation cost is saved. And therefore, the pollution in the atmosphere is also cut down to a very, very large level. It's not practical every time, but yes, it works. Coming to active measures, uh, the concept of electric vehicles came up for many, many years ago. It came up in the 70s. But uh, it didn't take off very well because if I have to buy an electric scooter, the scooter goes 50 kilometers. I'm very scared what will happen if uh, 50 kilometers later, uh, if I have to um, drive my scooter back home. I'm not very comfortable with the car. So there's a, there's, there's a little bit of uh, um, kind of a synergy which has to take between the government and the user, that infrastructure has to be created for charging these uh, vehicles uh, whenever they are required. So somebody told me that the amount of electricity which is spent in charging is more than the petrol cost which is going to be used in the scooter. So it's definitely not viable for, um, for use of utilization. Also the capital cost of these vehicles is so high that people are not encouraged to take them. Um, uh, some countries came with a subsidy scheme to, uh, to encourage buying of these vehicles. It didn't take off very well, possibly because of the lobby of the existing automobile uh, uh, not allowed to perform. In any case, it didn't really uh, take off very well. So, uh, somebody came up with the concept that you have a small solar plant, a uh, very micro small solar plant installed in your house, and you plug it in. You don't spend any, it's only the cost, the cost of the solar plant. You have a similar one in the office, and you have several ones, uh, several of these uh, all over. Uh, they had a concept of exchangeable batteries that uh, when your, your scooter runs or your car runs on this, 
uh, you exchange your batteries in any fuel station and uh, there is a kind of system. Uh, so this worked in some Middle East countries for something, but again it didn't take off to the extent that uh, it needed to. Possibly an impetus is required to make them work in that manner. There are a uh, concept of solar buses because uh, buses don't require as much of uh, torque as a truck requires. Uh, where the rooftop space of a bus is much more, it can generate more uh, electricity and charge the batteries which are running inside the battery car. It seems doesn't work in trucks at all, the trucks require much, much more traction. In any case, I'm talking of urban transportation and trucks are not really figure in urban transportation. What we're talking about cars and scooters. So, uh, what I've given is some food for thought for uh, people. So, how can we adapt? The passive ones are something we can do ourselves. We don't require anybody else's assistance. We can do it ourselves. The active ones are ones which uh, possibly the tables can be written and some uh, some impetus can be given to us from the government to make these things work. And that's all I have to say.